What's up everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. In this video, I'll be wrapping up a two-part video series with this Finishing Your Easy Drummer Song in a DAW video. If you didn't see the first Starting a Song in Your DAW with Easy Drummer video, I recommend watching that first. The link is in the description. The seven free Groove Monkey MIDI Pack winners from my last 10K subscriber celebration video are Shane Wilson, Joseph D, Bobby Case, Jan Patrick, Abram Studio, Fatuyi, uh, sorry if I said your name wrong, your name's on the screen, apologies. And Tobias Stefan, congratulations. Email me right away at shootyschool at gmail.com or contact me on my website submission form and tell me what your email address is so I can forward it to Russ at Groove Monkey and just stand by for your free MIDI pack. And for all of my subscribers, Russ from Groove Monkey has been kind enough to provide everybody with the Shooty School exclusive coupon code. It will be a 20% discount on any purchase at GrooveMonkey.com. And since Groove Monkey is currently already having a sale this code can be applied to the sale and get you savings up to 65 percent from now until august 15th central time my exclusive 20 percent coupon code expires on august 20th and can only be used once thank you russ from groove monkey for being fantastic to me and my subscribers just copy the code and click the link in the description of this video to get your savings and get on your groove monkey now, all the song parts that I use in this video have been written by Steven Paracone. He's a fantastic artist. If you appreciate these last two videos I've put out, please consider checking out his brand new YouTube channel and giving him a sub. In this video, we'll be moving pretty fast in Easy Drama 3's Grid Editor. Two things come to mind if you're not already familiar with Easy Drama 3's Grid Editor. One is check my description for my Grid Editor video. It's coming out soon. And two, consider watching my theory playlist, which focuses specifically on rhythms and communicating like a drummer, which is beneficial for working in a Dawes piano roll or Easy Drummer 3's grid editor. Now, this video is the conclusion of my 10K subscriber celebration. I hope you got something out of these videos and let's pick up where we left off. All right, now I'm gonna whip together the song structure as fast as I can. So there's two ways to work here, one way is I could take this verse and I could drag it to where the verse is in the song and then play it there, which is a slow way to do it. But if you're new, do it that way. I want to discuss an advanced way to preview all of these files in place. So I'm not dragging left, dragging right, dragging left. Do I like it or not? No, drag it back. I don't want to do all that work. Here's an advanced method on auditioning MIDI files. I'm going to loop my verse. And now I want to test this drum beat out which is at measure 105 to a verse that's at measure 5 they are not in the same spot they will not play together so i'll right click on that beat i'll find it select containing folder and grooves there's that beat in grooves and if you remember in the last video when you audition grooves out of your grooves tab it doesn't matter where the playhead is in your daw now we're going to move lightning fast i just hit play on it now it's playing the groove from the blurt browser you can see the playhead in Easy Drummer is not moving because the browser is taking control. And now we're previewing this beat to the loop in the DAW. I mean, it's super, it's pretty advanced, super time saver if you can understand that workflow. And I'm holding shift with my pinky and I'm hitting space bar to exclude DAW playback and only hear Easy Drummer playback. That's probably it right there. What's this? No, no Tom Breakdown. All right, this is what I want the verse to be. So I'm going to right click, copy it. I could have used the key command, control copy. And the verse is at measure five. I'll click on measure five. So we can see the CTI, the current time indicator, the playhead of Easy Drummer is now gone to measure five automatically because I clicked on the marker in my DAW. And I'll just right click on that CTI, paste all. And I could have hit, you know, control V. Let's make sure this is in the right spot and everything's working. Once we confirm that, we're going to slam out this whole song structure real fast. I'm at measure five. I'm on the verse one in my DAW. I clicked on the marker. Totally in business. Now, this is what, eight measures long? So this needs to be tight twice as long. So I hold control and I drag that verse over. Bam.
You can see how fast I'm playing back and stopping in my DAW and then in Easy Drummer 3's song track as well, isolated. If you watch my DAW frustrations in Easy Drummer 3 video, you'll be able to work as fast as I do. Okay, so let's go to verse 2. It's at measure 31. I'm just going to select these two MIDI blocks. I'm going to hold control and control click drag this over here. Now verse 2 is in place. Let's go to verse 3. And that's the breakdown version, so I don't want the regular verse in there. I'll go back to the boneyard. There it is, the breakdown. Right click, copy. Should have used the key command because I already showed that method. I'm now at verse 3 breakdown. There's the CTI. If I hit control paste and it doesn't work, it's because I haven't selected the song track yet. An orange outline should appear, so I'll click on the song track. There's the orange outline. Now I can hit control paste. I still have eight measures left in that verse. Let me just get a regular verse in there. Control click drag. Bam, done. All right, so all my verses are now placed. Verse one, verse two, verse three. Let's go after the choruses, go back to the boneyard. I've got two choruses here. I'm gonna click here. It's nice and bouncy. It's a little less bouncy. There's extra kick drums. Let's get. Let's take the bouncy one. Song's already put together except for fills. We're not going to be done when we finish laying the song structure. We're just laying it out. We still got to produce these beats. See how your beats can be more custom and can be more your own and how they can integrate with the music better. So stick around. Okay, uh, here's the intro turnaround. All right, let's figure that out. Boneyard, stop button, bam. Here's my fills. Let me zoom in down here. When I place my fills aside, I mean, there's a chance I might use one of these fills outright, but fills are so particular. The reason why I pull fills is because I don't want to use Easy Drummer's Grid Editor humanization feature when I have um, Rory's, the drummer of the Southern Rock MIDI pack, instead of the AI of the Grid Editor. Rory is much more valuable to me since the whole song is in Rory's humanization. So even though I might create some fills from scratch, I'm going to do my best to pull from Rory's performance. This one right here. Or this one. Both of those have flams, and I want a flam, so let's steal this one. Copy. That was somewhere around here. All right, so let's do that. I mean, generically, it could work and save your butt. I, that's not what I want, but that could work for you. Let me just take this and copy this with uh, control click drag right here. Let's check this out. Same thing. That's not what I want, but that's a placeholder. And then at the end, let me just grab this. We have now finished the song structure and dude, let's just dive right into the deep end of the pool and make this song our song. All right, so we're going to edit and produce our beats. Now I'm going to do all the fills up front. And when I'm done doing all the fills, which there's three, the turnarounds, the intro, the outro, and the middle turnaround, I'm going to blast through the rest of the song as fast as possible and possibly skip some parts because I'm concerned about the overall length of this tutorial video. So let's get started on the fills. If I just double click on a MIDI block, it'll launch, not only launch the grid editor, but it will highlight that MIDI block so we can stay focused. I'll hold control and zoom in on it so I can fill my whole screen and focus on it. This is at measure four. I don't have a marker at measure four, so I'll just type measure four into the transport, which will put my CTI there, and I'll set a loop point from there. And I'm just gonna go just a little bit past this fill so I can hear a little bit of this. Here's playback. Perfect. All right, let's get editing. This is the flam I wanted, but I don't want that snare hit there. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna drag it over. Now, when I drag this, it doesn't get locked to the grid. It's in like a relative grid mode, which is great. So it'll keep that humanization. I'm zoomed in far 
in the grid editor. I do not want to see these 30 second notes. The resolution is on auto because I zoomed in. I can see 30 seconds. I want to see eighth notes because this whole song is based off eighth notes and that's much easier for me to see the targets I want to hit. Here's the snare. Ka do ka do. I want a kick drum here now. Here's the arrow tool. Here's the pen tool. The arrow tool moves stuff around. The pen tool puts new information in. If you keep an eye up here, you'll see that I'm switching them on my keyboard. That's how I'm moving fast. I want to write a kick note in, so I'm going to hit number two on the keyboard and I'm going to put it where I want it. Now I'm going to check the velocity. I don't think it's going to be do me any favors. I want to change this. Let's get this up to about 100. Good. So got to, got, I want another snare right here. Got to, got to. I want another kick right here. Humanization is on, so it's not bullseyeing the grid, which is good. We'll double check its work. Got to, got to. No need for a rack tom here. Great. Let's get a cymbal right here. Do ba. I want another snare here, but I want the flam. Switch over to the arrow tool, grab this, control, drag this because I don't want to move it. I want to duplicate it. As you can see, we got the flam here and the flam here. Now, I don't want this flam to have the exact humanization as that. I'll pop off snap. And I'll just move it a little bit. What's this? this? Is a rack tom? Don't need it. Select it, delete it since I'm not on the right tool. Let's see. This tom should go great let's get one more kick drum pen tool snap is off so i better pay attention when i place this a little off the grid great um actually velocity looks decent velocity is pretty a little too much bring it down to 100 ish let's go This flam just seems a little too slow. It works as the first drum note of the whole song, but it's a little too slow over here. Oh, this hi-hat doesn't need to be here. So let me grab the arrow tool and just squeeze it together a little bit. Let's grab this snare. It doesn't have a flam backing it up, so it's not you know, building in volume. I give it a little love touch there. Great. All right, let's get into the second fill or turnaround. Now everything fits on the screen and it won't page back and forth. I want a kick drum on the downbeat pen tool. Kick drum. Just gonna check the velocity. I want it in the 90s somewhere. I want a cymbal squelch. I'm gonna go with crash three. And let me select choke instrument, crash three. Now I don't wanna choke a muted hit because that is an automated choke. I wanna get a custom choke on crash three. I'll just draw a box in here. And I'm only looking at this left line, not the right line. I don't really care about the right line, and I'll discuss that in detail in my grid editor video. It's pretty good. This is such a heavy hit. Let me get the velocity down. Yeah. Actually, let's just use that. That worked. I'm micromanaging my velocity right now, and this is a deep conversation, which we can discuss later in my grid edit video. All right, let's do the outro fills over here. I'll double click. Let me get a loop going. I mean, these are good punchy uh, symbol symbol, but let's look back here in the chorus. Shift spacebar. You know, I, I might want that power hand instead. One, two, three, four, five. Let me grab these. Let's do that. Let's get rid of this symbol since the power hand's now back. Yeah. Let's, now let's put a symbol in there, pen tool. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's get rid of these hits. Got boop, boop, boop. Let's get rid of these hits. 
we'll do uh, tom riff, just simple eighth notes, bam, bam. I'm not snapping, so I'm consciously putting these a little off. Cool. Um, let me select the whole tom row so I can see the velocity and fix this. Arrow tool. There we go. I needed to select the arrow tool just so I could get off the group and adjust individual notes. Let me grab the floor tom. Same thing happened. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of that. All right, pen tool, kick drum, and uh, choose a symbol. I, th I like Crash 2 better, it's higher. Ah, this flam is impossible because there's a symbol here. So let's get rid of that flam. I don't have three arms. It's a great ending. Let's keep going. The kick drum in the verses in this case should match the bass guitar because the guitar riff doesn't have any major accents. You may want to try exporting your bass or guitar lines for any of this and import them into the bandmate feature and try to get results there. In this case, it was more work than it was worth, but the process is always case sensitive. I have many bandmate videos on my channel for beginners and advanced users. Do check them out. So I will solo up the bass and easy drummer and work on the verse beat. This is what it sounds like with the stock beat. Now what I'm doing is taking the kick drums out that do not hit with the bass or simply work against the pocket of the song. And I'll add kick drums in that either support the bass, the guitar, or simply support the pocket or the head bob of our listener. Here's the new edited beat. Now that I have a foundation for the verse beat, I will copy them over to the rest of the verses. I'll hit undo. Or if you watch my advanced song creator videos, we could borrow a feature to automate the replacement of all verses instantly. Consider checking out those videos. Now the entire process I just did with the verses, I will do with the chorus, except in this case the guitar line has some really powerful upbeat accents. So I will solo and follow the guitar instead. Here's the beat before the edit. And here's the final beat. I will now copy my new chorus and put it where the other choruses are. The solo section beat, I will simply strip all the fat off the beat. The driving quarter note ride bell drives the whole section really well, and I don't want the drums to do anything to distract the listener from the spotlight, which is the guitar solo, not the drums. Let's keep it basic and strong. In the verse 3 breakdown section, I like the idea of 16 note hi-hats, but the pocket is off with them. That's neither Rory or Steve's fault since they did not record together. I'm the one trying to piece their parts together in the aftermath. But if you have this situation at hand, either select the instrument lane or drag a marquee around the instrument in question in the grid editor, enable humanize, reveal the humanize submenu here, Go to the More button and see if the micro timing of pushy or laid back will help settle the pocket.
in this case laid back made a valid improvement and since this beat transitions into the last verse section of the song let's add a few 16th note hi-hats in the last eight bars of the third verse to keep this breakdown theme going and to battle against the monotony of our copied sections Now the song is complete except for transitions, which to me mean very minor drum fills. So as the listener hears this song, it doesn't appear to all be cloned song section parts. People who air drum to your songs will notice right away that you are simply copying pasting beats. Let's try to appease them. There's many more beat transitions to do, but this video is out of time. If you want to see me do more beat transitions, check out my advanced song creator video. What else I did in this video was the first eight bars of the last chorus. I added some extra symbols, which should subliminally let our listeners know that we're nearing the end of the song. For the last eight bars of that chorus, I ended up using the guitar solo beat with that quarter note ride bell to really drive the finale. And I moved the outro fill back two measures so it's a part of the chorus, something maybe I should have done when laying out the song. So congratulations to the Groove Monkey MIDI Pack winners. And if you didn't win, check the description and get a discount code and get over to Groove Monkey and pick up your discount Groove Monkey MIDI packs. Thank you so much, Russ from Groove Monkey. If you want to hear or jam to this song that we worked on in these past two videos, do check out the link in the description. Join me and like minds on Facebook, Discord, and Reddit. And if I've ever made your day or upped your skill level, please consider contributing to me. I hope you got something out of this video and rock on.